Breaking news from around your world on this Tuesday, May 7th, 2019. I'm Larry Rice. Europe would reimpose sanctions on Iran if Tehran reneged on parts of the 2015 nuclear deal with world powers. That's according to a spokesman for French President Emmanuel Macron Tuesday. Iran's state-run news agency reported Monday that Tehran would restart part of its halted nuclear program in response to the U.S. withdrawal from the 2015 nuclear deal, but added Tehran does not plan to pull out of the agreement. Iran's president is due to speak on Wednesday. France, Germany, and Britain, the European signatories to the agreement that lifted sanctions against Tehran in exchange for restrictions on Iran's atomic activities, have scrambled to save the deal amid U.S. efforts to isolate Tehran since it announced its withdrawal a year ago. However, the three nations have repeatedly warned Iran that it must comply with all aspects of the deal and, most importantly, the elements related to nuclear activity. Two Reuters journalists jailed in Myanmar after they were convicted of breaking the Official Secrets Act walked free from prison on Tuesday after more than 500 days behind bars. 33-year-old Wa Lon and 29-year-old Kha So U have been convicted in September and sentenced to seven years in jail for violating the Colonial-era Official Secrets Act for receiving police documents while investigating the massacre of 10 Rohingya Muslim villagers. That case raised questions about Myanmar's progress toward democracy and sparked an outcry from diplomats and human rights advocates. They were released under a presidential amnesty for more than 6,500 prisoners. President Nguyen Miet had pardoned thousands of other prisoners in mass amnesties since last month. It is customary in Myanmar for authorities to free prisoners across the country around the time of the traditional New Year, which began April 17. Every suspect directly linked to April's Easter Sunday attacks in Sri Lanka is either dead or arrested. In an audio statement circulated by the Sri Lankan Defense Ministry, Sri Lanka's acting police chief also said security forces confiscated bomb-making materials that were intended for use in future attacks by the militants. The news comes after Sri Lanka instituted emergency powers, which gave sweeping authority to the police and military as they tracked down suspects. Sri Lankan authorities believe the Easter Sunday attacks were carried out by two little-known local Islamist groups, National Tawhid Jamath and Jamathe Milathu. The Islamic State claimed responsibility. South Korea says that President Donald Trump supports the country's plan to provide humanitarian food aid to North Korea. Yonhap News reported Trump and South Korean President Moon Jae-in spoke for 35 minutes Tuesday during a call in which the two leaders also discussed ways to continue dialogue with Pyongyang. The White House did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Asked by reporters in April whether he was prepared to ease some sanctions on North Korea, Trump said he and Moon were discussing certain humanitarian things and the possibility of South Korea helping North Korea with food. The U.N. said nearly half of North Koreans suffer from severe food insecurity and meager official rations are expected to be cut further after dry spells, heat waves and flooding have led to the worst harvest in a decade. Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un have met twice, but talks between the two leaders have stalled. On Saturday, North Korea fired projectiles off its coast, but Trump and his administration have played down those weapons tests. Michael Cohen, President Trump's former lawyer and fixer, reported to an upstate New York prison Monday to begin serving a three-year sentence for crimes that included campaign finance violations related to hush money payments he made on Trump's behalf. Cohen, who had been disbarred, was originally supposed to start his sentence in March, but a judge granted a two-month delay to give Cohen time to recover from surgery. After he left his Manhattan apartment, Cohen took a parting shot at the president, saying he hoped that when he rejoined his family, the country would be in a place without xenophobia, injustice, and lies at the helm of our country. Cohen, who has already testified to Congress, said he looked forward to the day that I can share the truth. FBI Director Chris Wray said Tuesday that he does not consider court-approved FBI surveillance to be spying and said he has no evidence the FBI illegally monitored President Trump's campaign during the 2016 election. His comments at a Senate Appropriations Subcommittee hearing broke from Attorney General William Barr, 
who said last month that he believed the Trump campaign had been spied on during an investigation into potential collusion with Russia. Trump seized on that comment as part of his allegation that the investigation was tainted by law enforcement bias. Ray declined to discuss in detail the FBI's investigation into the Trump campaign because of an ongoing Justice Department Inspector General investigation into the origins of the Russia probe. Barr has said he expects the watchdog report to be done in May or June. Barr is investigating whether there was a proper basis for the FBI to open a counterintelligence investigation into ties between the Trump campaign and Russia. A spokesman for special counsel Robert Mueller's office said Monday that Mueller would be concluding his service within the coming days. Mueller's departure from the Justice Department could simplify negotiations to have him testify to Congress about his report on Russian election interference and whether President Trump obstructed justice. House Democrats are pushing to have Mueller testify May 15th, but Trump tweeted Sunday that Mueller should not testify because his report showed no collusion and no obstruction. Attorney General William Barr, who in theory could block Mueller or any Justice Department employee from testifying, has said he is willing to let Mueller appear before Congress. If they tell him not to go and he wants to go, said Randall Eliason, a George Washington University law professor, he can quit and then go. A private jet crashed on a flight between Las Vegas and the northern Mexican city of Monterey, killing at least 13 people. Authorities said the wreckage was found in a remote mountain area using aerial surveillance. The flight plan listed 13 people on the plane, although some media reported there was a 14th person on board. Rescuers did not find any survivors. Mexican news media reported that the people on the plane had flown to Las Vegas for a Saturday boxing match between Saul Canelo Alvarez of Mexico and Daniel Jacobs of the U.S., the plane reportedly lost contact with air traffic controllers Sunday after the pilot started descending to avoid bad weather. China confirmed that it will send a delegation to the U.S. for trade talks this week. The status of the negotiations was thrown into doubt Sunday when President Trump tweeted a threat to impose new 25 percent tariffs on another $200 billion worth of Chinese imports this week. The Treasury Department confirmed that the new levies would be imposed Friday. It accused Beijing of reneging on commitments toward a deal. China said Vice Premier Liu He would lead a scaled-down team on Thursday and Friday. The news renewed hope for a deal, as Liu has the authority to make final decisions on behalf of Chinese President Xi Jinping. Stocks plunged after Trump's comments, but recovered much of the ground lost by Monday's close. Britain's Conservative government and the opposition Labour Party resumed Brexit talks Tuesday to try to find a way to break the deadlock in Parliament over the country's departure from the European Union. After Prime Minister Theresa May's deal was rejected three times and she was forced to delay Brexit, the government has spent more than four weeks in talks with Labour, negotiations that have done little to soften positions in either party. So far, there has been no agreement and few held out any hope of a breakthrough. The government on Tuesday also conceded Britain would take part in European elections this month, a poll which could deliver more bruising results to both major parties. Almost three years since Britain voted to leave the EU, there is little clarity about how, when, or even if Brexit will happen. May told her cabinet last week's local elections, when the Conservatives lost hundreds of council seats, underlined the need to get on with Brexit. And that's your update for this Tuesday, May 7th, 2019. I'm Larry Rice. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day.